Hey guys, welcome back. So in this episode, we are heading to Pleasant Valley, I believe. Yep, we're 58% the way through this tale, and I'm interested to see where it goes. Okay, so it's like early morning. A little cold, not too bad. We are still pretty tired. But otherwise, we're pretty good. I'll just sleep an hour. Hopefully that water will be fine. So my plan is to just walk through Mystery Lake and go through the dam. There's nothing we really need I'm in this... Leave something behind. Thanks, Will. There's nothing that we really need in this uh, game world other than to actually do the tales. So I'm going to try to basically not loot the dam at all or anything in Mystery Lake. I kind of just want to walk through it. I don't, like, I don't even need those ski gloves. Even if I could make them better. Like, our clothes are fine. We need a bit more firewood, but otherwise we're good. Yeah, so we should probably just get moving. Now, how heavy? We are pretty heavy. Um... Well... For one thing, that's too much. I do really want to carry around the gun. I changed some of my settings for when I'm recording and when I'm rendering. I lowered... well, I'd not, I didn't necessarily lower, I, I set a fixed bitrate. So if you're noticing like way too much compression that it's distracting, let me know. There's going to be some because YouTube automatically will compress things pretty far. So it's not going to look like it does for me now. I mean, even I kind of see almost compression in the sky and I'm like playing it live, so... As long as it's, you know, it looks good enough, then that's fine. But if it looks particularly worse than it used to, then let me know and I can change that. But the issue was when I wasn't uh, modifying it, then when I recorded Subnautica, the raw game would be 80 gigs for like an hour of footage. And then when I exported it, same thing. It would just be another 80 gigs, which obviously I can't upload. So I've just had to uh, lower the bitrate. So hopefully everything will work out. I've always really liked the like drawn mountains in the back in this game. How it's like almost a different art style because it's like it almost looks like a painting. But I kind of like that because there are times in real life when you're looking at the clouds or like something really far away and you're like, that literally looks like a painting. It looks like somebody painted it in the sky. Um, I wonder, I don't think it's going to be any faster to take the, the, was it Northern Axis, Southern Axis, whatever thing through the ice. I don't think that's going to be any faster. Yeah, run away. I just need to I need to just shoot some of these because this is too heavy. Can you hit fire? Oh, you can. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, imagine if you couldn't hit fire, like what's the point? Or I'm pretty sure did I raise up the 
Did I raise up the actual, like, spawns of animals in this difficulty? I don't remember. But could you imagine having this many wolves, like, any other time? You see the, the nice oak trees that they added to Mystery Lake? Oh, they have a pretty wide detection range. A body just like on like pop out. <laughs> oh yeah, I love when they run towards you when they're afraid. Wow, that was it's a good thing this is like a game that doesn't really matter in terms of the survival aspect of it. That'd be pretty pathetic if I, if I couldn't do that. But yeah, I recently uh, uploaded part three in my afflictions guide. Feel free to uh, check that out if you're interested. I came to... I spent some time in Desolation Point to change up like the background footage. And I also came back to Mystery Lake found a revolver in this train car in that world and I also was able to like walk up to the dam and then a wolf saw me and I was able to just shoot it this this like carcass has been here in the last like three or four worlds that I've had in here I know that there's a lot of like carcass spawn locations I'm not sure if there's any that are permanent in every difficulty, always, but certainly that one is very common. But, so yeah, when I was filming that, I like that footage for the Afflictions Guide where I'm getting the Affliction or something along those lines that's related to it. And if you watch part three, you'll notice I didn't actually ever get intestinal parasites. I was just cooking the meat because I made a... I made a custom world that was based on like interloper and then I made it like really easy in terms of loot and I guess one of the settings I changed I'm pretty sure I could get intestinal parasites but I think on some difficulties like I don't know I, I ate tons of cooked predator meat in that world and I just never got any risk so I just used the footage of me killing the wolf and cooking the meat because I wasn't I wasn't gonna like I already spent maybe an hour or two grabbing footage in game, you know, putting myself into scenarios that I have to, like, that's why I'll just drink a liter of unsafe water and stuff like that. But yeah, I wasn't about to like do another world. The hard thing is, right, a world that I don't know precisely which settings would affect that. I know that there's literally just a setting that says, can you get intestinal parasites or not? And I thought that that was on, but I still couldn't. So if there's something else that affects it, maybe it was off, but I just thought it was on. But suppose it was on, right? Then it would be hard if I'm like, okay, well, I'll just start up an interloper world just to get footage of that. But like, how am I going to get predator meat on an interloper world really fast, you know? Either I have to find, like, a rare wolf carcass, which I don't even really know if those exist on Interloper that much. Or I have to, like, get a bow. Or, like, kill a wolf in a struggle somehow and then cook its meat just to eat it and get intestinal parasites. Like, that's so... That would take so much time. So, yeah, I just ended up with the, uh... The footage, and I think it's fine. It serves its purpose. Some of the others were kind of fun. And yeah, here is an example of a vehicle in Mystery Lake. I did check though last time and there is no battery in it. But I suspect, maybe not in all of the transmitter locations, but I think in a lot of them, they are going to give you a battery. 
At least most of the time. Now, I, I really just don't want to spend much time here looting. I mean, I do. That's the issue. I want to spend time here looting. But I really don't need to. We have plenty of food, plenty of everything. Oh my god. Never mind. Feels like a lot of gear. La in the last game, there was no battery in here, so I guess it's like a random spawn thing. So yeah, okay. But if we go through the dam, then we should get to Pleasant Valley really easily. And if I personally were putting a transmitter in mist in Pleasant Valley, I would definitely put it at Signal Hill. And so we're going to be right next to Signal Hill anyway by going this route. So it's probably the bet the fastest route to get there. I still love the like episode one and two redesign of the dam. I, I don't really remember what it was like before. I know that there was no fence before, that was sure. Um, but yeah, I still love the touches that they did to these maps when they introduced story mode. I mean, there weren't even power lines along the rail tracks, right? Ugh, look at all the loot I could probably get. Alright, let's... Let's, like... I guess if there's transmitter parts, I should take them. Drink up. I guess I shouldn't fully drink. I should eat first, because that's going to drain my, um... My thirst meter. And this will drop some of the weight. I'm still, it's it's so interesting. Like part of me is still kind of nervous about the dam. Not nearly as much as I used to be because you know, fluffy. And if you don't know, uh, before episodes one and two, there used to be a wolf in the lower dam, or at least down the steps there. Pretty much inside all the time. And now she's been moved to some other location that I'm not going to spoil for you. Just be on the lookout. Not all interiors are safe. I mean, I guess I did spoil it in... Would it have been my There's interval? Gotta be something useful in here. I basically had the same conversation in that video, so I guess it's it's whatever, you know. I'm sure most people probably know. I guess I'll take those. Um, tons of loot. Breaks my heart. I'm just going to ignore most of it. We're kind of tired. I think we're fine to just keep moving, though. Yeah, so sometimes... I don't even remember. I feel like there used to be, like, a door here in this whole dam area. It used to be, like, another interior that had to be loaded in. But now it's all one thing. And in story mode, you can actually find the corpse of a wolf, like, around here. As, like, a reference to Fluffy. But the dam used to be really scary. Because, like, when the game really first came out, the dam was, like, the only, like, big area at all. It was, like, the only sort of enormous base that you could have. Now there's a lot more uh, grand interiors that you could make a base. You'd think I would know which way to go after all this time of playing. Just go through here and then around the other side. Really just have bullets everywhere. Now, do be careful when you're walking around in the dam in the evening or at night. Because some all it takes is... There, well, there's a lot of wires on the floor. And sometimes auroras can start suddenly. And if you're on that wire, you're just going to take huge damage very instantaneously. Am I going the right way? Yeah, I just have to go down from here. And all I have to do is go down 
like there. Oh, that's clever. You see, they put a hitbox here, so you can't jump down, even if you want to. But I'm pretty sure there are other ways. Like, I mean, I think you can walk out of there. I don't remember if you can just walk in. I don't think you have to go down the rope, though. Which will be a small issue given our weight and how tired we are. So, hmm. I don't think you can just walk over it, though. You can walk over it one way, but not the other. I'll try real fast. See if I can get down there without taking the rope. Otherwise, I'll just have to drop something. Isn't a big deal. See, but that's always so confusing to me. That's so confusing to me. I don't... Oh, I get it. I'm an idiot. That's okay. The rope isn't here to be like, yeah, you want to get over here, you have to take the rope. The rope is here because there's wires, and if this is an aurora, you have to take the rope. But otherwise, you can just walk over, no issue. Well, this side's a bit more of a hassle. Okay. I didn't understand from a gameplay, game design perspective why that was there, but now I do. It's just for auroras to make the damn... That, that was so cool, the way... <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Uh, is this lantern better? End up being useful. I think not. Yeah, we should probably just keep moving. I'm really tempted to loot, but this area was like infuriating in in story mode because you would try and I think you had to get over here for something and. You would try and sprint past the wires, and it doesn't. You can't sprint past them in story mode. They they have a hitbox, and then you'll just stand there and burn to death. I'm sure, I have a knife already. Uh, there's also this path on this side. There might be loot over there sometimes. Redstone. I don't think we really need that. Pretty sure all we need is to see the end of the tale. Um, this will come in handy. These are probably better, just because I like I think I had these shoes for mobility, but this is like the same mobility, but overall better. Maybe I could do a clothing guide at some point. Because I don't really know all the clothes, especially on the easier difficulties, all the new things. I don't really know what's, like, best. Other people have done clothing guides, but I don't know, maybe. I'll have to think about it. There's so many different types of guides I could make for the long dark. Antiseptic. And this is the enter entrance back into the dam. Of course, it's a one-way... Oh, right. <laughs> I always forget how this works, so... This is the way back in, right? But there's just a door somewhere over here that's the exit. I think. And I always walk past it every time. Because it's still... I think it's new. I'm pretty sure it's a new layout after story mode. But I'm pretty sure that there's just a door that you can leave through. And it's either somewhere over here or it's in the upper dam. If it's in the upper dam, that's kind of really funny. And for all I know, I even walked past it already. No, I think it's in this hallway. Yeah, it's like up here. Yeah. Is it this? Yeah, that's... Oh, I always forget that this is the exit. 
And the be careful when you leave here because you can't get back in this way. You have to go all the way around. So do I want to sleep? Probably. We can travel at night. It's not too big of a deal. Sleep like three hours. Stop him from panting. Just be careful where you sleep in the dam, because again, if you're standing on wires and an aurora starts, that's not going to be good. It's almost night time. Okay, so this is the, the way out. And if you want to get back in, it's all the way over there and you have to walk this ledge. This texture... This texture looks really low res right now. I don't know if that's... Wait, can you just fall off? Jeez. Anyway. I think I heard a rabbit just get murked. Yep. I think another rabbit's about to get murked. Yep. They just spawn in and immediately start killing. And I've heard... That when there's a wolf eating another creature, another one? Oh my god. And you point, you aim at it with anything. On any difficulty, it will always run away. I mean, obviously it's going to come back, so you should make a fire, but... So I've heard you can pretty much always steal food from wolves. On this difficulty, obviously I can. They'll run away if I just walk to them, but... I've heard that they never attack you. I haven't really tested that on a high difficulty, but that's what I've heard. Boom. Look at all the... Look at the dead bunnies, jeez. I do really like that you can just follow the, the wires. There's no way I can hit a bunny from here, right? No, I hit the ice. Wait, was that a faster way down? Isn't this the way up? I'm so confused. Oh, it's so windy. Get in the wind cover. It's better. About to get worse again. Do I make coffees? No. If I had a heavy hammer, I could make some, but... Um, is this where the cave is? I don't really care. I'm just gonna walk past, but... Oh, windy. I, f I don't remember exactly. I feel like it's this way because that's where the wires go. Yeah. At least this should be narrow enough that we should be mostly in the wind cover. And we're not walking directly into the wind anymore. A weird stone texture. <sighs> See, we had to go around because there was like a collapse. the power lines go? Oh, they're like over there going that way. Wait, where did the... Hmm. 
Interesting. So I guess they just go, like, off the map, right? Because we're going to go through a cave. So is there, like, a point in Pleasant Valley where the power lines enter? Or how about, like, in Coastal Highway? Because those have to go somewhere, right? That's interesting. Um, is this the transition cave? There's more area over there, but I... I mean... I don't think it's the normal sleeping cave. I think it's the... THE cave. Something's making me feel tired. Okay. I guess I'll just keep going until I'm too tired to go. There's like an aurora during the night. We'll have to find the transmitter real fast. That's cool. I like that. It almost looks like the person was hit by the log. You really kind of have Karns... This is that cave, isn't it? Yeah, it's the one where there's Karns every, like, three feet. Like, we already passed one over there. There's one here, one here. Um, I don't remember exactly which way to go. Here's another one. Another one. <laughs> They're everywhere here. Jeez, Will. This is why people play Astrid. sleep for like three hours or something not the whole night but just some of it no aurora yet they can start in like the middle of the night or right at the end but See the glitch there where it's it showed that I was still eating the power bar, but I was actually eating the um, jerky. So that's what happens if you flip too fast. Oh, another one. Was Timberwolf Mountain the fourth region? Other than the connective regions? Mystery Lake, Coastal Highway, Pleasant Valley. And then I think it was Timberwolf Mountain next. Back in the day, all we had were, like... Coastal Highway, Pleasant Valley Mystery Lake. I'm pretty sure I'd hear if there's an Aurora, right? It'd be... Wait, was there? Is that why it was so bright? Whatever. Because <laughs> now it's dark. And... It's okay. Still have to find the transmitter anyway.
Alright, we're headed uh, this way. I think. Yeah, I think it's like this way. Hunting blind, that's a good sign. I wonder if there's any accuracy in these stars, or if it's just completely artistic. Because, I mean, there's clearly more than you would normally see in, like, a city. I wonder if there's, like, any actual... Like, even one actual, like, constellation. That'd be cool. I mean, it's also, it's nice to have, like, an artistic depiction, but it's also nice to, uh, have something more realistic. Alright, so we walked from that cave to this cave. Everything over here looks flat, so I think we just keep heading up. Oh dear, would you look at that. That's really interesting, having this next to this. Like the carcass was already there, and then a person was like starving, and they barely made it, and then they just died, <laughs> or something like that. Or they fought; they had an epic battle, and then they both lost. I do love a nice, quiet, peaceful morning. that just the sky in this game will have like every single color like right now it's like like look at that pink it's just great and then the orange over there and sometimes they can be purple and green and okay, there's signal hill if the transmitter is not here it's <laughs> um it'll be somewhere maybe like a farmhouse or somewhere else it, it must be here right like Conceptually, I don't know where else would make the most sense. I mean, it's literally called Signal Hill. If for some reason it's not here, we should at least have a good view over Pleasant Valley to probably see it. I hope I see it, because I could get like a nice thumbnail with the sky and the transmitter here. Is that it? I think it is. It's hard to tell. I feel like they're taller than that. No, it's right there. Okay. I think I'll go inside the fence. I'm just thinking about a thumbnail, honestly. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think like one of those frames will probably be pretty good. to repairing. Hopefully there's a battery in there. If not, we'll have to find one. Really interesting how long these, like, 
radio transmitters have been in the game. And like, they've basically done nothing except maybe in story mode. But they've been there in like every region. It's kind of cool that they're adding something to it. Wonder if you can be attacked by a wolf in this animation. Imagine that's how you lose your interloper run, you get animation locked. Metal parts, wires, and then the battery. The devs will be nice, they'll put a battery in here. I have complete confidence. I've never been more confident of anything in my life. Would you look at that? So now I'm wondering if I missed batteries in the other locations or if it is just random. Another one? This Snow pants, that's a thing. Those are probably like some of the best pants. I'd have to guess if I repaired them. Well, we're gonna have plenty of time, right? So I guess I should repair them. I'll just it's probably better, but Okay. Probably totally fine. It's starting to weigh me down. Oh. All right, now after two minutes, we'll reach the panel and we'll be able to replace the battery. I love that you can still kind of see the stars. They don't just like vanish, they fade out like how they would in real life. Interesting, so the, our mysterious signal is also in Pleasant Valley, so we're going to have a bunker here somewhere, and I'm pretty sure after this, I think there'll still be one more bunker, although it's 67% and we did two of them, so that could be two out of three, I don't know. I thought they, the patch notes said something about the final bunker, quote unquote, so we'll just have to see. But it's mostly just a matter of passing time for us, I think. I'm curious, let's see how good these end up being. Compared to this one. Yeah, they're pretty good. Wear that and drop that. And picked up shoes. Did I have those the whole time? Water, I didn't even see. There's so much. That'll come in handy. More stuff to loot, but I oh, okay. I don't know if I need any more repair things. I guess not, right? Because it did. there's no more repair transmitters. So I should probably just leave all the stuff around here. Instead of taking it with us. Because we haven't needed it. Whoops.
That's the one issue with the heavy, um, like the weight um, filter, I guess is what it would be. Is that when you drop like one thing, it just moves its location, so it's hard to drop many. How bad's our gun? It'd be good to clean it if I were to actually end up using it. One thing that'd be cool is if when you shot things like crows would go away for a little bit too. Just give them more life. But we literally have nothing to do except to wait. And we're 40 minutes in. Um, I think this might end up being a bit longer of an episode than usual, rather than me cutting it. Could end up being useful. Because I could just like cut it now and then do the next. But I think if I just like literally. Oh yeah, and that in the footage as well, I tried to give myself cabin fever and that same thing. Even though I, I'm pretty sure that was like an interloper based custom um game. But I guess there was still like I just slept indoors. I turned off sleep as a resource, which was a great decision because it lets me sleep 12 hours chunks continuously. And basically, wow, I like lost my train of thought. But I, I tried to sleep for like eight hours straight indoors and I did not get any cabin fever risk. So I'm like, this game is just busted. I'm not redoing this. I'm just going to use footage from my interloper world. <laughs> this peanut butter 16 is actually dangerous. 22% though, there is zero risk. Ironically. And now I will sleep like three hours. Gives plenty of the night. If there's no Aurora tonight, oh man. Well, there's still time. I'll just sleep like in one hour chunks or something. Come on, give me that... Give me the buzzing. Give me the, the life noise. There it is. I'm gonna sleep through a bit of it, but. Oh, not even. Look how much of the day we have. How much of the night we have left. Let's go. Okay, we have two things to do. Let's go do them. Well, I, presumably we have two things to do. This one's not actually giving a signal. So there might not be any loot. But I guess we should find the bunker first. That's kind of more important anyway. Uh, oh no, it's going to be... Like this way. Okay, and this one. Well, we can. I know we can get down if we go like all the way around down here. Oh, we're running fast downhill. All right. This one. Nothing. part of the Aurora? Yeah, it almost looks like one of them campfires you'd find in Hush River Valley. Oh, well, we're going this way then. Oh my god. I'm actually really curious to see what we can see. Wait, that's a thing in Pleasant Valley? Oh, the road curves that way, doesn't it? 
And this is that lake. I never realized, like, it's sh shaped like that. That's so cool. Oh, goodness. Another tree in the rocks. No. That way. Oh my god. <laughs> We're gonna just die before we get there. Just bruising, I don't care. This was not the way to come down here. I should have kept going all the way around. I guess we will make do over here. Really, Mackenzie? You don't know how to fall two feet? You know how hard it is to like injure yourself when you fall like a foot? I mean, I guess it's not flat and it's snowy and... But still. You can do better than that, Mackenzie. So, it's more like this way. Nice Aurora Wolf over there. This one, nothing. So even though this is the region with the transmitter... I wonder if the final bunker then... Whichever one you do last, you end up with... The bunkers in the same region as the transmitter and there is no loot to have. There's only... A bunker. That's just my... Um... Wow, they really do have crazy detection ranges during the Aurora. That's just my guess. I don't know. But we're going to find out. Hear all of the wolves react. I don't think I've ever been over here in Pleasant Valley. Maybe like up there I've been, but never like over here. Still plenty of time. The blinking's pretty infrequent. I mean, we're definitely going the right way. Why is our running different? Is that the boots? Did we just lose a lot of weight? Oh, we're getting close. This one's still nothing. I didn't even know, like, this was here. I'm guessing it's behind the big rock, not in front of. This is definitely a good place for a bunker. It's, like, in the middle of nowhere. Maybe it's the huge pile of snow. This one still has no signal. I don't know exactly what we're going to uncover in here. But we are armed and we are ready to handle it. Get killed by wires. 
This is Bunker Beta. Just as before, I think I'm still going to use the Storm Lantern just to have just that bit of extra light. Things. I have seen these Use this. lying around. I think they're pretty good. I like that it's not just like the same bunker layout. Also, it's really interesting how these industrial toilets give non-potable water. I'm taking that heavy hammer. Okay, there's... And there is a battery here. So I wonder if we will have to repair something. I'm going to read that in a moment. I just want to get like a sense of the layout. There's this area and the other thing. Some foods. About this. That's clean water. I don't need like most of this stuff. I'm just... Also, if you do want the loot, search the, like, cupboards and things. But I'm going to get into the story. We ran power to Rudiger's machine for the first time yesterday. It was nothing like what they predicted, even at half energy. I still have no idea what the endgame for all of this will be. The whole project. And I'm seeing now that few of the men building it do either. It's all over their faces. All this time underground isn't helping their morale, but I'm confident our fragile truce will hold until we're finished. We worked hard to make it this far after what happened to Team 3. But afterwards? Impossible to say. Also, I'm just realizing you can actually kind of read the text in the book. Like, that texture actually does have the text, it's just hard to see. So they're building something. They said something about truce. I guess I'll I'll do the same thing I've been doing, which will be like analyzing everything sort of. But for now, we just continue. So what's this going to be this time? Session twelve, Project Medical Officer interviewing patient seven. Back to the third instance. Find the bridge between them. Trying to. <laughs> okay. It starts the same as every other time. A dark room. Square. I feel the wall behind me, and I can barely make out the walls to the right and left. It's smooth, like steel or glass. I can't see the wall opposite me. It's too dim. I walk forward, and that's when I notice it. Every time. The pit. Just... a, a hole in the floor. <laughs> it's... it's it's funny, the floor seems to slope a little bit as it reaches the edge. But the floor is made of bricks. Bricks that start to bend. Best I can tell. And the end? The last image you can remember? That's when it shows up. What shows up? Can you describe it? <laughs> From across the pit. Where the other wall should be. Something... Darker. And everything around it sort of floating. It moves to the edge of the hole. No face. Just a moving shape. A shadow. Is it me? My face? God damn it. Man, that's when I wake up. Every damn time. Okay, so... I kind of was picking up on that at the beginning, but... I don't know if all of them are, but I'm guessing... I'm actually kind of starting to think that all of these are his dreams. At least those parts of the story. This looks interesting, so is this... Of course, we have to go back. I, I figured if I was going to do something last, I'd take us back to the Forsaken Airfield. Use the repair transmitter. So we, we repaired the network, and now there's a network, and we have to head back there look for signs of additional bunkers. 
And I assume that's where we'll find the last one. Okay. This is really... I wonder why they put a battery here. Yeah, this is super interesting stuff. I'm not leaving yet. I'd like to... I guess I can loot a little bit. So much. So he's having dreams about this stuff will come in handy. Shadowy figure over a pit. Well that seems positive. And we don't really know who this guy is, except for the fact that what, he's being spoken to to see if he's a good fit for the team. I wonder if he's on team three, and that's why, for some reason, whatever happens to team three is, like, because of this guy or something? A lot of importance on the story. That's also a good thumbnail eventually, so if I ever need one, I'll use that. Alright, let's just spend a moment this off and I'll do what I've been doing and I'll look through the the actual book well the things that we have so far or the notes okay so chief's log 6 14 23 14 14 4 and 12 so presumably I mean these I think are so far mostly unrelated I mean they're clearly related but not like directly in terms of story Where did I find this note? Was this in the airfield? Let's turn the lights on longer. I think it was. I wonder if that those have anything to do with this. All right, so let's just go in order. So they have a goal that they're coming to the island. Um, the island isn't very good to them. Notice our operations around the airfield and mine. So at least one of the mines in Great Bear belongs to these people. But luckily the locals don't really care for outsiders, so they're just going to ignore them. And that works out well for them. So they're in the mine now, really bad. Her job is to keep the men working, essentially, and they have to keep mining. Found a decent chamber to start building his gadget. Teams 1 and 2 are with the program, but on shaky ground. So she said something about a truce later, about keeping these people, whoever they are, in, like, agreement with one another. Team 3 is getting volatile again. Additional security is going to fly in. Medical officer has been conducting alignment interviews and has some troubling observations. An alignment interview, again, I'm pretty sure would mean, do you align well with the project so that we can take you on board? I'm still considering the implications both for the men as well as the project. So this is the first time they've built the machine, ran power to it. Nothing like they predicted, even at half energy, which I'm assuming means it drastically overperformed. I wonder if this is going to be like... I mean, obviously, a direction they could take this in is this gadget is the reason for the whole geomagnetic disaster, hypothetically. That could be where they're going with this. But, so there's a machine that takes power, obviously, and it's drastically overperforming, is what I can kind of gather from this. They don't know what the end game is once they, like, finish all this. All this time underground isn't helping the morale. So they they built this underground in presumably the fa the final bunker. Fragile truce. Maybe maybe the, I'm overthinking the truce, and so maybe that's just like none of us want to be here, but we have to get this done. So that's the truce. After what happened to Team Three, so something rarely bad happened to Team Three. All right, now let's look at these in order. This is the second instance first occurrence. And I'm presuming that this is a dream now. 
thinking about somewhere. The first two really have to do with water, and the third one really doesn't. But they... So this has to do with, like, falling, right? This dude's, like, sinking into a deep pit. And the last one is about having, like, a deep pit. It's just this one's in the water. And also gray stones is kind of similar to... Flat gray stones, kind of similar to the concept of the bricks, I guess. It, do, it doesn't really curve into the water. I mean, I'm probably really overanalyzing this, but yeah, so... Fell in. Nobody cared. Pulled my head out of the freezing water. The sun was shining through the trees above us. Was was the sun out? I thought. The rain, no, that wasn't it. So it was four, four. First instance. It was at a beach. Sand goes all the way down to the water with no drop off. Which sounds really similar to the bricks going straight to the hole and then curving in. Remember a gray day with dark water. No wind, no waves. I was alone looking around. Didn't understand what was happening. What do you think when you're that little? So this is clearly a dream from childhood. So maybe there's one experience from childhood that he's sort of tackling with all of these discussions. They lost me. I walk forward. Wait, okay. Back to the third instance. Find the bridge between them. It starts the same as every other time. Dark room. Square. Wall behind me. Barely make out walls to left and right. Smooth like glass or steel. So like in a bunker, for example. Maybe he stumbles upon the project as a kid or something. It's too dim. There's a pit hole in the floor. Floor slopes into the pit, kind of like the beach sort of just goes straight into the water rather than having like a deep drop off. Bricks. Bricks that start to bend, best I can tell. It shows up. Something darker than everything around it sort of floating. It almost sounds paranormal the way that he's describing it, which is interesting. Moves to the edge of the hole. No, f no face. Just a moving shape. Shadow, is it me? My face. God damn it. That's when I wake up every damn time. So I'm not... Beyond the connection between the bricks sloping and, like, the beach sloping and falling into a pit, I don't really know too much more from that, but now we know where to go next. We have to go back to the airfield, and we will do that in the next episode. So I hope you guys are enjoying this series and that you've had fun for this whole hour. And I will see you guys in the next episode.